Welcome to the Live Full Work Fun Podcast. This is the show to encourage you to live your life to the fullest and do fun work that fuels your lifestyle. Hi, I'm your host, Gayla Scrivener. Every week, you'll be introduced to amazing guests, useful resources, and inspirational stories. You'll discover opportunities and perspectives to shape your version of living full and working fun. Before we get started with the show, I have a question for you. Are you a busy solopreneur struggling to find the time to consistently post to your social accounts? Well, the Scrivener Solutions team and I are introducing Scrivener Social, the easy-to-use social media scheduling platform paired with all of our workflows. It simplifies the entire posting process, saving you time and boosting your social media marketing efforts. Here's how it works. First, you subscribe to Scrivener Social, choosing the support level that best fits your needs. Second, we have onboarding calls to help you set up your account and give you the guidance for streamlining your posting process. Third, you implement your plan using our workflows to get more out of your social media marketing. Now, you could continue to do it alone. Being frustrated and feeling guilty that you never get around to posting to your social accounts for your small business. Or you could save time, energy, and frustration by using an easy-to-use social scheduling platform backed by a support team that helps you streamline the whole process. You deserve a system that makes posting to your social media faster and more efficient. Go to ScrivenerSocial.com and subscribe today. Now, on to the show. Hey there, and welcome to Season 8 of the Live Full Work Fun Podcast. Hi, I'm Gayla Scrivener, joined here by co-host Fran Grosbeck. Hi, Fran. Hi, Gayla. This show is where we explore topics that help you create your lifestyle to live full and work fun. Today's topic is about deload week. I was so intrigued. when Fran, you and I were talking. You had just come off of a a heavy, heavy load of of project that involved an event, and it was very uh, time consuming, mind consuming, all of the things. And instead of going right back to the office after the event, you made a big decision, and that's going to be changing on how you view things from this point on. Why don't you tell us about that? Sure. It really was, Gayla. It was. And as anyone knows, when you're working on big projects, it goes on for a while, right? It's months and weeks. And all of a sudden you go into that last part approaching the deadline and things really amp up and you make sacrifices. You give up things. You may miss things with your family. You have to work weekends. You do all kinds of things that really, really weigh on you and can push you to burnout, right? So normally the old me would come home from an event or finish a project and push through. And I might take a little bit of time with my family, but I'd get right back into the same pace the first office day I'm back. And this time around, not nothing major, but a lot of little personal stuff had piled up. And I said, I'm going to take the time to do this. And I made the phone calls and I called the repairman and I did all those things that were just sitting there waiting for me. The next day, something else came up. And what I realized all of a sudden, it was three days in and I was getting up when my body told me I needed to get up, getting the sleep I needed. I was taking care of these things. I was taking breaks. I was resting. I was taking a walk outside. I was walking my dog, seeing my children. And I realized I was feeling more energized than I ever had. So I made this decision to take the whole week. Now, it was inspired by, in um, physical fitness, people who lift weights, they call it the deload week, right? So some do it for eight to 10 weeks, you do all the heavy reps, and then you take a week where you deload. Inspired by that name, that's what it was my mental deload week. And the next week when I returned to the office, and I didn't just sit on the couch. Like I said, I did little things here and there, but I did it at my pace. I got back to the office 
the following Monday in full capacity. And I realized the world hadn't ended. And no. I felt better than I have ever felt in my life. And I have been so much more productive since that time. And it is now going to be something, this idea of a deload week is something I'm going to implement at least twice a year. It helped me catch up on life and it helped me reset my batteries. And that's different than vacation. Way different. This wasn't, I didn't sit, I didn't go to a spa. That would have been lovely. This was... You took care of things at home. I took care of things at home. I did a lot of cleaning and organization. I did. I took care of things that had been on my to-do list for months even if it was making a phone call to schedule a, a, you know, a repair, not even a repair, somewhere just to go get a quote, um, following up on bills from doctors. I think I told you this one. It was like the fourth time I got a bill and they just had didn't process it correctly through my insurance. I took care of all those little things that just pile up. And all of a sudden that pile was gone. And coming into work that after that was it's so freeing. And I'm still riding high off of that time because by clearing up that pile of clutter of all those little post-its and pages that I had printed of things I needed to tackle, each day I feel like I'm breathing again. Those Not all those things are resolved, but they're, they're, they're in motion now. They're not just sitting in a pile on my desk. Yeah, I took care of those things that we often, whether you're an entrepreneur or you work for uh, in an office or in, a, in another location that we say, oh, we put work first, got to do this, got to get this done first. No life has to get done at some point. So it was just like we clean a closet or we do spring cleaning. Deload week is meant to kind of clean up all those little things that have been weighing over you. And I will tell you, as I say it, I still get that same feeling of some big weight was lifted off my shoulders. Because all those little projects and post-its are gone. Well, you know what I take away from your experience, and I want to implement a deload week or deload period of time after the accomplishment of a big project, because I know firsthand what that project was. And oftentimes, especially, you know, driven individuals don't stop to celebrate the accomplishments. And for this project, there was, you had been working six months or more on this project, um, full force. It was like daily conversation on this project. And it was finally done. And that deload, and I know that driven, driven individuals, we tend to do some sacrifices for the projects because we know that there is going to be an end. There is a reason. There is a why. And and we, though, don't appreciate our efforts. And a deload week allows us to pause and reflect and take care of other things that had to be postponed because there's not, I've talked to a lot of individuals about work-life balance. Is there really balance? And it's more like there's moments of time where priorities, one thing needs to have higher priority than another. Not that you abandoned your family during that six months and you, and we can talk a little bit more about boundaries because as entrepreneurs, any, every one of us need to have certain amount of boundaries so that we can stay connected with our family, because we don't want to become workaholics that we lose the people that we love, and then do quality work, but have a break for ourselves as well. So there's got to be balance on it, or a, you know, some sort of rotation of balance, I guess you could say, of how we need to take care of ourselves and, and our family and how priorities change. But I love, I love this idea of a deload week. Because a day is not enough. I mean, and so often, like after that project, you got home because this was an event that you were, you know, you were coordinating and when you got home on a weekend day or on, yeah. So, so it was like a Saturday, wasn't it? And typically ingrained in our, in our brains is Saturday is usually a home day. Sundays are usually a home day. You better get back to work Monday morning bright and early. So, and that's, it's, 
breaking those mindsets. I had, Gayla, I had no guilt in what I was doing. I still, I did check email a little bit. I did, but everything was my pace, getting up when my body said it was time to get up. It wasn't oversleeping. It was all, everything, like you said, it was, the whole week was in balance. It was about mental, emotional, and physical balance that week. It was, what do I need to take care of to keep this sense of kind of mental clearing up going, right? So, okay, I do need to check a couple of emails because this was important, but I, nope, those can wait. And I'll tell them, I'll be back next week. Now I need to shift and I need to go take care of that personal stuff. Oh, I'm going to take a walk. And it was this, I felt like I lived in a type of flow. My, I just trusted what my gut said. Nope, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go outside. No, I'm going to take a break and go take a walk. Nope, I do want to answer that email. Whatever it was, I just went with the flow. And the whole week was about just clearing the clutter. And most of the clutter, I'm not a clutter type person, as you know, from my office, but the clutter was in my mind. Because even though I have all the right files and notebooks for everything, it's it was all up in my mind. And I every time I put something to the side, I still knew it had to get done. And to have this deload week, and I know I can feel some of our listeners thinking, I can't do a week. I didn't think it was possible either. Again, you're not taking a vacation. You're not just sitting on the couch. This is a week to take care of all the little things or the things that we think are little things that just seem to pile up while you keep the rest of life in motion and being gentle on yourself. I think that's the real thing. It's not just putting your feet up. It's just being gentle on yourself for a whole week and getting all of the clutter cleared up. And it changed everything for me. It just has been, everything since then has been better. Nice. I love that. You know, with a bit, we we have to set boundaries with and not have guilt about that. And I think the big thing and the big accomplishment that I see of you is that you did a guilt-free deload week. And the big word is not deload, but guilt-free. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was that's the biggie. And you and you took that pause. There's so many productivity type of books or or things that I've read that really advise that in order to be productive, that you need to clear the clutter. Well, you said it right there. It doesn't, you may be the neatest Nick ever. Your desk is totally clear, but is your mind clear? And we have to consider that. That's an excellent point. And we I know all people face this, but I feel an especial, a special bond with women on this one. Guilt is a big word in our, we have mom guilt, we have sister guilt, we have a friend guilt, we have guilt every time we do something for ourselves. And they say, there's lots of sayings about how you have to love yourself first before you love other people. And that's great. You have to know how to do it. And doing a deload week is one way you can start showing yourself and saying, I'm allowed, I give myself permission to do this. And you do have to do it guilt-free though. So if you have guilt, maybe you start slow with one or two days. (laughs) Um, It definitely came around because I now know how to set boundaries. That took me a long time. I won't say my age, but it took me a long time to get here. Um, and it, it it does go hand in hand with deload and finding time to deload because you have to be able to say in clear, kind, and confident terms what you will and won't do that week. And that's not going to be easy with everyone in your life and some clients. <laughs> correct. Correct. Now, and and sometimes... I mean, we make our decisions and we prioritize and and things happen, um, but it, they are our choices. And I think that if if any, whichever listeners are growing their own business, I mean, uh, that's that's something that you and I like to do, to do and feel like, hey, that that provides us a a full life and fun work is that we create our own business. And if you're an entrepreneur. And you're just starting out. Sometimes the mindset is that you have to work certain days and certain times 
for a traditional work week. You don't have to, right? No, not you, at all. you have the power, and this took me a little while. We have the power to create our work schedule. And if we want to have, like, for example, I started out Monday through Friday, just like everybody else, and I'm supposed to be here. And then my team may work different hours. Do I need to be on point? And, and we, at the same time, that they're working. It's like, no, I don't need to be working 24 seven. You figure out those boundaries and that, that communication can be slower than an answer right then and there. But one thing that I did, cause you know, my, my husband, Robert and I like to travel. And when, when we would do our nomadic traveling in the past with the still mindset that I've got to be working Monday through, through Friday, it was stressful to find internet on the way that we, we travel, you know, it's like, okay, uh, we could travel around Friday afternoon. And then by Sunday night, uh, we better have our, uh, a, a good internet camp spot. Or if we don't have good internet, then we need to go to a, uh, a coffee shop or, or whatever. And we have to commute to town cause we like to, to camp remote. Well, you know, I just decided that my calls are Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and my Mondays and Fridays, and heck, Saturday, Sunday, but whatever, it is like the schedule that you have for your deload of, I do have things, but I don't have specific appointments. But I do know that it, my my schedule freaks out my team that sees it because I have block times everywhere, all color coded. Focus on this today. Focus on this. There are appointments with myself. That's how I stay, you know, focused to to get things done. But as far as recurring client meetings and any other appointments, they're reserved for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I have four days to that I can navigate. We weren't traveling much for the when I initiated this. I was anticipating us traveling in a couple of months. We haven't for nine months and we're about ready to, and it's already set. I'm already in my routine because it took me a little while. Right. And then just knowing, like going to an, going to an event, because I just came off of an event and I should have, well, I did. I needed a day or two to deload after an event that I attended because you want to kind of reflect of from everything that you learned. And I don't, I don't know if I think that deloading for a whole week after a big project, like what you just went through is, is super important. But if you go attend and you, you don't have as much work to do, you're networking and, and stuff like that, but you get a whole bunch of information, then I think it's important that you don't just go right back to the office right after an event, because you need to pause and take note that, first of all, recuperate your mind, but then pause to see what are you going to do? What action are you going to take from that event? Sometimes it takes different, it does take different people, different things to motivate them. So think about a couple of things. Those, any event, any big project, it's information overload, right? You're, you're, some nights you're not sure, you know, what day it is and things like that. These kind of deloads and resets reset the mind so you stay productive. If you push through it, you're going to be at partial mental capacity, which means every task is going to take twice as long, or it's going to not be your best self involved in that project. Taking the deload and the that time to reset the your batteries physical, mental, and emotional, whatever they may be, is better for everyone. Another thing I learned in that week, I left the work to my team and they got it done and they felt empowered because they felt I trusted them and believed them to be able to handle it. And they stepped up. And it's amazing what people will do when given the chance. So there's a lot of different things that that can help you, motivate you to give this a try. The biggest one is, you know, cost time and money when you don't do things right the first time and it costs time and money in your business. 
if you're so burnt out trying to do work, it doesn't get done right. And then there's lots of repeat work. But the other part of it is, is investing in your team. You've done all this work. You have these amazing people. Around you. And if you're doing it by yourself, then maybe that deload week is, like I said, you do a couple emails in the morning and you put some boundaries, but it really will all still be there when you go back. And you'll be so much better and stronger for it. It's it's incredible feeling. And you've the whole point of all the changes you make, especially as a, a in your business, it's changing the thought, right? So if you like you just said about changing your schedule, it's also changing where you work from, right? Look, mm-hmm. you work out of all kinds of places and locations and vehicles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that for me even had to be, I didn't have to be sitting at a desk. So during deload week, when I checked those emails, I wasn't at my desk, I was on my couch. Because now we have devices that are so fantastic. You can be anywhere. At one point I was sitting on a bench looking at the beach, answering because I knew there were a couple of emails and I just wanted a different, but that can be any day for any entrepreneur. Even if you have a shop, is there a part of the shop that you just love being in? Go do your do your emails or your inventory from there. You can grab little deload moments even in a day, but just make sure they're happening. And however you have to get them started, it really will be one of the best investments you do for yourself. Did you ever have, because I, I know I've been trying this for a while and over time, my, my guilt has gone away. But if I, if it's a, like a traditional work week, there's been this feeling in the pit of my stomach. It's like, and I know it's guilt, but it's like, I should be doing this. And, and I, they're going to be mad at me if I don't do it like right now. And, and all of, all of the things. Have you ever experienced that? And have you gotten over it? I have. I used to feel all of those things and struggle with them. And I can, and it wasn't that long ago that I was still feeling them. I've had in the uh, work I've been doing over the last year, things have changed tremendously. And I've learned a couple of things. Whenever those feelings creep up, any negative feeling, guilt, fear, anger, anything that really feels uncomfortable, I stop and I ask myself why. So I'm having guilt over a client. Like, think about it. Okay, what could I do better, different? Why am I feeling this way? Oh, because I don't think I'm giving them the right updates. So I'm going to start calling them and make sure they're getting the updates. I'm removing the elements that were causing the negative feelings. Anger sometimes is a mirror to that is <laughs> uh, inspiring you to see something you don't want to face, whether it be you have to make a change or you have to accept something. But yeah, the getting rid of the guilt has been one of the most powerful, all of this, this all works together. I don't think I could have done the deload week if I hadn't learned the tools to get rid of the guilt and know that I was doing what's right and best at that time. I use a couple of questions in my mind. One question is, is this what I'm doing right now moving me towards my goal? And that day, that goal that week was I needed to reset. So everything I did that week was my doing that, is that goal? Sometimes your goal could be a specific goal or project, physical goal, uh, project at work, a financial goal. And using that question helps you eliminate the guilt because then it weeds out the tasks or the activities or the social media streams or the video games that are taking you away from that. It's okay to do all those things. It's okay to be on social. You can, you know, people love to talk about what social does to mental health, everything in moderation, right? But when you are in a moment where you start to feel the guilt, apply these questions and it'll help you see, no, wait, I am moving towards the goal. So there is no guilt or, okay, yeah, I'm wasting time here. I'm procrastinating and it's not the good kind of procrastinating. So let me get back to it. And um, it's a lot of self-awareness, a lot of self-honesty and being gentle on ourselves. We, I've spun something around in my life. We're always taught to treat others the way we want to be treated. I have turned that around and I know there's people who teach this. I treat myself the way I treat others. And I enter into, when I start thinking about 
guilt or trying to shame myself over something, I replay the situation. I say, would I do that to one of my daughters? Would I say that these words to one of my friends? And that's a good showstopper too, to stop the guilt. We have to embrace our wonderful, chaotic, beautiful, imperfect selves <laughs> and be okay with um, th those bumps in the road, but eliminate the guilt. It is not a friend. <laughs> it is not an ally. I love it. I, I encourage all of our listeners to take note and incorporate a deload day, a deload few days or a deload week after a big project. Celebrate, you know, deload your mind, your body, the declutter, all of that. And do you have any final uh, like advice to, to folks, Fran? Making time for yourself and taking care of yourself should be the top investment you make as a small business owner, as an entrepreneur. And everything will benefit from that. As a human being, <laughs> really. As a human being. Because we can serve others if we better, if we take care of ourselves. And yeah, I love that. I think, guys, let's continue this conversation. Why don't you hop over to the Facebook group, post your biggest takeaway from today's show. We would love to hear that what kind of, you know, deload day or deload week have you experienced or are you scared about doing a deload? What's your take on on having a deload week after a big project or a big event? Just go over to Live Full Work Fun Facebook group and post your comments. We appreciate it. Well, thanks again for listening. Until next time, have a fantastic week. We encourage you to live full and work fun. This episode has been brought to you by Scrivener Social, the easy-to-use social scheduling platform built for the busy solopreneur. You deserve a system that makes posting to your social media faster and more efficient. Go to ScrivenerSocial.com and subscribe today.